Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Before I begin on the stories, I just wanted to mention, if you have your own personal scary story that you would like to send me for me to possibly narrate here on the channel, you can do so by sending it to southerncannibal.com. So if you have a personal true scary story that you'd like to share, please consider sending it my way. Now that all that's out of the way, let's begin. My name is Ted, and I'm currently 16. I live with my folks in the boondocks in the countryside, where the woods are quiet and the nights are dark. It was two years ago when I was 14, and I had just built this mini bike and got my own fishing supplies. For reference, there's a creek and there's a bunch of trails if you go a mile down the road, and then from the trails, go at least 15 miles into the woods with nothing but a creek and woods and underbrush there. Well, I decided to go fishing with my mini bike on a warm summer evening. I was all alone, riding down to the creek. When I finally got there, I would set up my fishing things and began to fish. The sun started to set, but there was still light. When all of a sudden, the bushes behind me then started to rattle and shudder. I thought it was an animal, but then there was this creepy old man who came out, looking really, really rough like he went through a lot in his life. I had started feeling uncomfortable, but I did have a knife in my pocket, but I didn't want to pull it out just yet in case this man had a gun. He then said in this old shaky voice something about going another couple miles into the woods where he needed help with something. I said no thank you, but he just kept getting closer and closer. So I then grabbed my stuff and then booked it the hell out of there on my mini bike. I then told my parents, who alerted the police, and a couple of days later, it was said on the news that there was a dead body all cut up and tortured, only about a mile or two away from where I was at on that very evening. I was sick to my stomach, and I never went back to those woods without my dad there. This all took place during the summer, and we're in the countryside of Miami, on a ranch in the middle of nowhere. My family would meet up at the ranch to hang out with each other. It would be me, my brother and sister, and all of my cousins playing, while all of the adults did their own thing. It was dark at night, around 11 p.m., and me and my cousins as well as my older brother, let's refer to my older cousin as A, my brother B, and my younger cousin C. So the four of us were bored and we wanted to explore outside the ranch and play tag or manhunt. So to set the scene for you, it was pitch black outside, and our only source of light was dimming pole lights that were pretty far away from each other, as well as our small phone flashlights, and right by the dirt road was really tall grass. So we're walking around the road, and we had decided we wanted to play manhunt, and me and my brother B were it, and my cousins needed to hide from us. And so we waited about 10 seconds for them to go run and hide, and then we'd go get them. Me and my brother had then ran into the tall field of grass to go find them, and we ended up splitting up. A few minutes pass by, and I get my younger cousin C, and I take him out to the dirt road, waiting for him and my brother to come back. We then see my cousin and my brother come out of the field, and they look at us all confused. My brother had asked, How did you two get up here before us? Uh, what do you mean? He then went on to describe how him and my cousin had saw two dark figures chasing each other around in the field, and they thought it was us. Before I can say anything, we heard walking in the field, and then two tall dark figures walked out of the field, but they were much farther down the road from us. We all get really confused, and my heart dropped right out of my stomach. We weren't able to see what they looked like because of how dark it was, but before my brother could ask who they were, they got on all fours and started running at us. We run as fast as we could, all the way back to my grandparents' ranch, which luckily wasn't too far away, but I was behind my cousin and brother while running, and I was terrified. I didn't know what they were going to do to me if they caught me. When we finally made it to my grandparents' ranch, we then slammed the gate entrance so they wouldn't get in. We all just kind of sat there after that, shaking and out of breath but I then did something really stupid. 
I decided to go back up to the gate and look through the bars and see if they were still there. But there was only one of them, and they were standing at the end of the road. I watched as it slowly walked back into the field. I was relieved for a second, and then it hit me that that was only one of them. So where the hell is the other one? I started to panic, and I was holding back tears. I then told my brother and cousins what I had just saw, and they were freaked out as well. But they just tried to stay calm, and they said we would be fine, as my grandparents have weapons here if it did try to come for us. Now, we couldn't tell the adults at the time, because there's just no way in hell they would believe us. And they were also drunk, so they probably wouldn't even bother listening. And I didn't want to tell my little sister because I didn't want to make her and my younger cousin scared. When the time came to go to sleep, I was absolutely terrified that it would come back for us and then attack us while we slept. I had eventually calmed down and went to sleep, and the next morning, my family and my cousins all went back to the city. But overall, nothing bad had happened to me or anyone else, thank God. But to this day, I have no idea what or who the fuck those things were, and I very rarely go to my grandpa's ranch anymore. For a bit of a preface, I live in a small town in the UK. It's in the countryside, quite isolated, and really old-fashioned. Everybody knows everybody, but it's a very toxic environment, and I've always felt a very unsettling aura here. When my friends from the city have visited in the past, more than one of them has said that the town itself is like the setting of a horror movie. A lot of unexplainable and strange things happen here. Satanic chanting from empty houses. There's an abandoned office block that multiple people have disappeared from. There was an insane farmer who had murdered two young boys 20 years ago, and he never got arrested. But this very incident that I'm about to tell you about stuck with me more than anything else that I've ever witnessed in my 10 years of living here. Me, my boyfriend, and my friend were out, as we are most nights, drinking and smoking. There isn't really much to do with your time when you live in a place like this. We began to make our way home around half past midnight. I can't remember what day of the week it was, but I assume it was a weekday, as there weren't many people around. Now to me, this makes what happened just a little more strange. We were making our way up a long, desolate road. The only source of light was coming from a shop that was just closing. The street lights here automatically go off at midnight, so there wasn't much I could see around me. On this road, there's a gate with a small alleyway that leads between two houses. I doubt anyone else even knows it, but it can be used as a shortcut to get into the main part of the town. It's private property, but there isn't a lock on the gate, and I discovered a couple of years back where exactly it leads to. On this night, we were walking on the side of the road where the gate is. Sometimes we make comments and laugh about the alleyway, as we know the man who owns it really hates when people go down there. The lights were on in the house as we approached, and my boyfriend turned his head to look into the window. We had made some sort of joke about the man just sitting in there, but we didn't need to use the alleyway because we were headed in a different direction. Well, seconds after I turned my head away from the window, my boyfriend exclaimed in shock and my friend screamed, now terrified. They started running without saying another word and out of fear and confusion, I turned to look into the alleyway as it was right next to us. What I saw made my heart stop. There was a silhouette of a man just standing there looming over the gate. I'm five foot six, and the gate is about as tall as me. This man was so abnormally tall that he had made the gate look half the size of what it really was. It was way too dark to make out anything about him. That includes what he was wearing, his age, or what he even looked like whatsoever. One glance, and I then started running to catch up with the others. We were all half laughing, but also terrified at the same time. When we'd finally made it a decent distance up to the road, we turned around, and the man was following us. We sped up again, then turned back to see him going back into the alleyway, and then closing the gate behind him. I know for a fact that he wasn't the man who owned either of the houses that the alleyway goes between. From the pace he was moving at, I gathered that he was quite old. 
I know this isn't the scariest of stories here, as nothing bad actually happened to us, but what really sticks with me is that man's intentions. Why would he be waiting by the gate in the pitch black darkness at around 1 a.m.? I really dread to think what would have happened if it was just one of us walking home that night, or if I or either of the others were walking up that street with our headphones in. We would have never looked in the alleyway or been aware of our surroundings at all. He could have grabbed whoever it was walking past and dragged them away into the alleyway to do God knows what. Another nagging piece of evidence that in my mind, this was a premeditated malicious plan, is that the streetlights only turn off early in the week, just like it was that day. Neither of us walked home that way for a good couple of months after that, and I thank God that we were all together that night. I also want to add that I'm not at all suggesting that this was a paranormal encounter, but at the same time, I can't express how abnormally tall this guy was, and the image of him standing in the dark is burned into my brain. I hope I or anyone else never, ever bumps into this guy at the wrong time. I think I was only nine years old when this story happened. On the night in question, it was my parents' 10th anniversary, and they were going out somewhere. For some context, I live in southern Middle Tennessee, and my town isn't really the safest place to live. Anyways, my dad had given me one of his old burner phones just in case I needed to call them or the police, and they then left on their vacation. I had used the phone in question to talk to my friends. I was about an hour into a call with my bestie Jacob when I had then heard a knock on the front door. Now, Jacob is about a year older than me, and he knew a bit better. Hey, there's someone knocking at the door. Should I go see who it is? I asked him. No, dude, just ignore it. Go to your room, he said. I did as he said and just went to my room. He told me to call him back if the knocking continued. I got bored, so I went back to the living room, which is where the computer was. I was right in the middle of a YouTube video when I then heard that same knocking again. I decided to look out the peephole. All I saw was a black circle. I then realized that it was the pupil of someone's eye. I suppressed the urge to scream and I went back to my room and called my friend. I told him to send his dad with his gun over to my house. I forgot to mention this, but my friend and I live about a half a mile away from each other so it only took about two minutes by car to get to each other's houses. Anyways, I hung up on him and then called the police. As I was on the phone with the police, I heard my friend's dad then scream, Hey, what the fuck are you doing here? You better leave before I blow your fucking head off. My friend's dad later told me that the guy got scared and then ran off. The police arrived shortly after and called my parents. They left as soon as they got the call. I never stay home alone anymore. I'm 14 now, and I always thank my friend's dad for saving my life that night. I sometimes wonder what could have happened to me if my friend's dad didn't come, or if my dad didn't give me that burner phone. I live in a small southern Utah town. I've always thought that it's a really safe place, and I'm never too worried about going to places alone. That is, until this happened. I always try to avoid this one grocery store closest to my house, because I always see really sketchy people from town there. So, I go out of my way to avoid it. But on this day, my husband had hurt his back on his dirt bike, and he needed me to go and get him some Tylenol and ice packs. So, I wanted to get home as quick as I could. He stayed home with our five-year-old daughter, while I went to the store with our one-year-old son. This was in the middle of the pandemic, and I usually always remember my mask, but this day with everything going on, I had gotten halfway to the front door of the grocery store, and I realized I forgot it. So I then turned around and I went back to my car to get my mask. As I turned back around to head back into the store, I made awkward eye contact with these two strange men walking towards me. I'm a really awkward person, so I tried to avoid them, but they came right towards me and my son. Then one says to me, Hey, pretty lady. How's it going? I just smile awkwardly and try to walk past when the first man then grabs my arm. 
I froze instantly, and the man that was with him got behind me, and he kept trying to touch my son's cheek. All I could think to do in that moment was to just hold onto my son as tight as I could. The man kept trying to talk to me and asking me questions, such as my name. I gave him a fake name, and he then asked me if I'm married, which I then said yes. At this point, I'm almost back in my car to try and keep these weird men away from me and my son. Mind you, I did have pepper spray on my keys, but at that moment, I honestly couldn't think of anything but keeping my son safe because I was so terrified that one of the men would try to grab him. I kept shooting strangers walking past with terrified glances, but no one was paying any attention to me. I finally get the nerve to try and push past the man who still got a hold of my arm and I then tell them that I need to get to the store and get home because my husband will be worried. I just shook off his arm and said once again, I have to go, to which the first man replies, Baby, you're not going anywhere. You're coming home with us to party. Now, this man looked to be about six feet tall and probably 250 pounds, and I was absolutely terrified. At that moment, a couple walked past, and I called out to them. Oh, hey, guys funny running into you here and I then ran up to them they were complete strangers but it was the only thing I could think to do to get away from these men I was shaking and holding back tears and as I walked with them I went to go thank them to which the woman replies with um excuse me where's your mask I then started bawling at that point and entered the store trying not to throw up I couldn't believe how rude they were to me after all that just happened to me I mean honestly A mask was the last thing on my mind. A manager walked past and asked me if I was okay, to which I told her no, and I told her what happened with the men who stopped me, and how they kept trying to touch my son and wouldn't let me walk past. She walked with me through the store as I grabbed the few things I needed, and she then had a bagger boy walk me out to my car. I'm so embarrassed that that happened to me, that I just froze instead of fighting to get away. I still get so upset when I think about it. If they would have grabbed me or my son, there's really only so much that I would have been able to do to get free. Ladies, it doesn't matter how comfortable you are in your town, or if it's something just as small as going to your local grocery store. Always be prepared. I always thought that I knew what to do in that situation, until the day actually came, and I froze. I'm so glad I got away from them, and I don't even want to think about what could have happened if I didn't. This happened back in August 2021. I'm the oldest of four siblings. I'm 15 years old. My mom decided that we should go visit my grandma for her birthday. She didn't really have anybody since my grandfather passed away about three years before this. For some context, we live in Tennessee and my grandmother lives in Oklahoma. So it takes about 11 hours to get there. Anyways, it was only my mom and us going. When we had just passed the state line to get into Arkansas, I felt my mom slam on the brakes. I had my headphones on, so I had asked my sister, who's 12, what just happened. There's just some man just standing in the road, she said. I looked up, and I just saw a tall, thin man just standing right in the middle of the road. I could tell that he was holding something in his hand. My mom kept honking the horn and asking him to move. He then very slowly walked over to my sister's window and just stared through it. I could then see what the man was holding. He was holding a kitchen knife. Mom, mom, drive away. He has a knife. I yelled. My mom sped the fuck out of there. We only stopped once for gas. Later on, when my sister got out to get a snack from the store, she then saw a sticky note on the door. It read... You're really lucky you got away. When we finally made it to my grandmother's house, we told her what happened. We were all kind of freaked out when we left because we thought we might see the same man again. But luckily, we didn't. To preface this, I love to drive. Like hour-long drives to nowhere, with no destination in mind. Just me, my music, and the road ahead of me. I'd often take back roads or lonely highways, cutting through the countryside to small towns and eventually cities, 
and I'd usually take these drives at night since there was less traffic to worry about. I've done it since I've had my license four to five years ago, and I've never once had any sort of issue, nor have I ever run into any trouble. That is, until a few nights ago. For reference, I'm a relatively small 22-year-old female, and as I've stated before, I often take these drives completely and utterly alone. They're a really good way to clear my head when I'm stressed, upset, or overwhelmed, or for me to get a plan together to sort out personal issues. I've also done these long and lonely drives to get away from the toxicity of my household when I lived with my parents as a means of coping with their alcoholism. Though now that I've moved out, I'm in a much better place mentally, and I don't really have that urge to get into the car and drive anymore. However, the night this event took place, I was feeling pretty overwhelmed, stressed, and really anxious with a clusterfuck of personal issues that I'd rather not get into. I felt really restless and irritable around my boyfriend. I couldn't focus on anything, and I decided I would take a drive to clear my head. My boyfriend was understanding, and he told me to be careful and to not be gone for too terribly long, since it was getting pretty late. I agreed, gave him a kiss goodbye, and left. I drove around our city for about 30 minutes, but I was still feeling on edge about everything transpiring in my personal life, and so I decided to drive further down those familiar dark, winding one-lane highways. I kept the car at a steady 65 miles per hour, taking the turns at a slower pace in case a deer jumped around the bend and was just admiring the vast empty darkness of the snow-capped fields and barren trees. It was honestly a bit creepy, being all alone with no cars in sight, and seemingly the middle of nowhere, the few houses miles back from the road, completely lightless, and the dead cornfields withered away and covered in snow. It was like something out of a horror movie, and I half expected to see a ghost pop up in my rearview mirror or see someone clamber out from the patches of trees dotting the horizon. The only light came from my headlights, and even then, I still strained to see through the inky darkness of the night. By now, it was just after 11. I then told myself that once I made the familiar roundabout that would either take you to a small town or back up towards the city, I would head back to town and go home. Now, that roundabout was still maybe about 15 to 25 minutes away, but other than my imagination picturing the worst, I wasn't really all that concerned. I mean, I was by myself. I didn't have any other motorists to worry about, right? Wrong. As I'm rounding another bend, I notice a vehicle with its hazards flashing, maybe a quarter of a mile or something away from me. It was some sort of sedan, dark colored, and it was angled to where only part of it was on the shoulder, while the rest was jutted onto the road like they had to pull over in a hurry, but didn't quite manage to do that. The driver's side door was flung wide open, and as I slowed down my vehicle and then angled it towards the opposite side of the road so that I could pass, I could make out what looked like maybe blood on the inside of the open door. I didn't see anyone on the road or in the car, and I was the only motorist in sight. Cell phone reception is spotty at best in this part of the country, but more often than not, you couldn't get any reception no matter how hard you prayed, which was definitely the case when I took a glance at my phone to see if I had any service. So a lone female on the road at night, pulling up near a vacant vehicle that looks like someone had been attacked on the inside and with no cell service. Now, I'm no dummy. I've watched countless episodes of Investigation Discovery and Criminal Minds, and I've read far too many crime books to know that this had bad and danger written all over it. But there was still a small part of me that had really worried that something terrible had happened to whoever was in that vehicle, and I thought I needed to help. These roads don't get a lot of traffic late at night, and the temperatures get well below freezing. If someone were hurt or in trouble, there was no one and nothing else to help them but me. Still though, I stayed on the side of caution. I was still driving my car, though a bit more slowly, and as I approached the vehicle, I rolled down my passenger window a bit, shut off the music, and called out. Hey, anyone there? Are you okay? I didn't hear a response. I worried they were passed out somewhere, but I wasn't about to get out and look for them. I told myself I'd call out one last time, 
and if I didn't hear anything, I would leave, and that the moment there was reception, I'd call it in, and if I did hear someone, well, I'd figure out my next course of action then. So again I shout, Hey, what happened? Are you okay? There was silence for a bit, and I then heard rustling in the shadows of the trees, followed by a gruff voice saying, Yeah. I was relieved at first, and I was about to say something in response, or possibly even stop my car and get out, when I noticed three things nearly simultaneously. As I had inched my way past the front of the sedan, I noticed there was no damage to the hood or anywhere else on the vehicle, which I found to be strange considering the blood on the inside of the door. In my rearview mirror, I caught a glance of someone coming out from behind the sedan, and they were now making their way right towards my car, fast. The person didn't have any blood on them, or appeared injured in any way, and they were wearing a mask. Not like a face mask for COVID, or a ski mask, or anything normal, but one of those masks you would see in the Purge movies, and they were holding something in their hand. I don't know what it was, I couldn't get a good look. But from its length and shape, my best guess was maybe a tire iron or a crowbar or something. I don't think I need to tell you that I slammed on the gas the moment I noticed those things, and I drove like a bat straight out of hell, my heart thundering in my chest and my entire body just shaking. My window was still rolled down in my haste, and the music was still shut off, so I could very clearly hear someone, definitely a man, shouting at me, though I had no clue what they were saying. I just knew I had to get the fuck out of there immediately. I took one last look in my rearview mirror as I drove away, mostly to see if they were getting in their sedan to follow or chase, or if they had stopped. The man with the weapon was still just standing in the middle of the road, just watching me, and right before I looked away from the mirror, I then saw a second man emerge from the trees that had been rustling earlier, also wearing one of those creepy ass masks and no trace of blood on him. I probably broke every single law for speeding that night, but I wanted to get as far away from those men as possible. As soon as I made it to the roundabout, I turned towards town. I parked in the Walmart parking lot that thankfully still had cars, who I assumed were workers closing up shop, and then proceeded to have a full-on meltdown. When I could pull myself together, I called one of my friends, T, who was a police officer, and told him what happened, and I asked what I should do. He was really concerned for me, asking if I was okay, where I was, did they follow me, etc. He told me since it was out of city limits, he couldn't really do much on his end, but that he could get in contact with the local police in that jurisdiction to take my statement and have it checked out. I agreed and thanked him, and while I waited for the police to show up, I called my boyfriend. Through my hysterical sobs and panic, I managed to tell him what happened not even 10 or so minutes ago. He was, as you can imagine, super freaked out for my safety, and he wanted me to either come home immediately or drive down himself to take me home. I told him the police were on their way to take my statement so that I couldn't leave, but I'm okay, and I just stayed on the phone with them until I saw the familiar police cruisers pulling into the lot. I gave the police my statement, and they assured me they'd go back to the spot where I told them I saw the sedan at and they said they'd take a look and that they'd try to catch the guys who did it. Though with no cameras and no description of the men, I wasn't really sure they'd be able to. I didn't even get the license plate number, though at the time of my panic, that thought never came to mind until the police were asking for it. So all they had to go off of was a dark colored sedan and two guys with masks. After I gave my statement, I went straight home and stayed curled up close to my boyfriend the whole night listening to every sound in the house, in fear that it would be those guys arriving any minute to then finish whatever they started. Since this incident, I haven't heard back from the police about whether or not they have any leads, and I'm not sure they ever will. I'm just really, really thankful that I'm still here, and that I didn't stop my car or get out. I'm not sure what would have become of me if I had. I still have so many questions that have no answers. What were they doing? Why? What was that blood on the inside of the car? Or was it all just a ruse to get more attention? If it was really blood, did they hurt someone else? What would have happened to me if I stopped my car? Needless to say, I won't be going on any more late night drives to anywhere.
and I hope I never cross paths with those insane freaks again.